welcome to this new driver's eye view video. In this program, we shall be travelling along the Fife Circle route in Scotland. Starting at Edinburgh, the first part of our journey sees us travelling to Glenrose with Thornton via Dunfermline, calling at Haymarket, Edinburgh Gateway, Dalmeny, North Queen's Ferry, Inverkeithing, Rosith, Dunfermline Town, Dunfermline Queen Margaret, Cowden Beath, Loch Gelly, Cardendon, and finally Glenrose with Thornton. A total journey time of around 60 minutes. The first station at Edinburgh was opened as North Bridge by the North British Railway in 1846 as the terminus of the line from Berwick upon Tweed, which would later be incorporated into the LNER's East Coast Main Line from London King's Cross. In 1847, the stations of General on the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway and Canal Street on the Edinburgh, Leith and New Haven Railway were opened. The three separate stations were then demolished and replaced with the current station of Edinburgh Waverley in 1868. Its first extension was in 1897 with the addition of an impressive glass dome until 2012 when it was replaced by new strengthened glass panel roofs. In the present day, Edinburgh Waverley has a total of 20 platforms, consisting of 10 through platforms and 10 bay platforms, and is the second busiest station in Scotland, with Glasgow Central being the most busiest. Most of the services are operated by Abellio Scott Rail, along with other railway franchises such as Avanti West Coast, Caledonian Sleeper, Cross Country, LNER and Transpennine Express. Our four-car train is at Platform 16 and consists of two Class 158 Express Sprinters which along with the Class 170 Turbo Stars operate the services on the Five Circle Line. <laughs> Leaving Edinburgh, we get a glimpse of the Scottish National Art Gallery and the Royal Scottish Academy before entering Princess Street Tunnel, 121 yards long. On the left is Edinburgh Castle, which is situated on an extinct volcano, though sadly is not shown in Train Simulator. It was built in the 11th century, during the reign of David I. Today it is in the care of the historic environment of Scotland. We pass a Class 320 to Edinburgh, just before entering the Haymarket Tunnels. Both are 1,040 yards long. The tunnel we're in was the original, opening with the extension to Edinburgh Waverley from Haymarket on the so mentioned Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway in 1846. The southern tunnel was added when the line was quadrupled in the 1890s, after the fourth bridge was opened, allowing a connection from Edinburgh to Dundee, Aberdeen, and Inverness.
we arrive into Haymarket Station, just two miles from Waverley Station. Opening as the original Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway Terminus in 1842, only to become a through station in 1846, when the Northern Haymarket Tunnel and Princess Street Tunnels were opened to connect with Edinburgh Waverley. In the 1890s, the line was quadrupled, requiring the boring of the Southern Haymarket Tunnel. The station has been through several alterations and redevelopments over the years, the most recent being completed in 2013. Today it is the seventh most busiest station in Scotland and is mostly served by Scott Rail, with the other franchises that use Waverley Station. It is also an interchange with the Edinburgh Tram Network. To our left is the line from Carstairs via Slateford. It was originally a short connecting branch between the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway from the Caledonian Railway's former main line from Carstairs. Until 1965, Edinburgh had another major terminus called Princess Street, which was managed by the Caledonian Railway. However, none of their trains ran to Waverley due to disagreements between the two companies. The line is now used as part of the suburban network between Glasgow and Edinburgh, as well as for mainline services avoiding Glasgow. To our right is Haymarket's train maintenance depot, which manages Scott Rail's class 158s, 170s and the class 43 HSTs. However, after the Stonehaven derailment on the 12th of August this year, all of Scott Rail's class 43 HSTs have been put into storage. We also pass Murrayfield Stadium, which is home to the Scottish Rugby Union. The stadium is the largest in Scotland, and the fifth largest in the United Kingdom. We pass the tram stop at Bowl Green, which is on the site of the former railway station of the same name which closed in 1968. Edinburgh Tram Network now crosses our line to reach Sorton's tram stop. Sorton Junction, where the North Clyde line to Glasgow continues straight ahead, whilst we turn north onto the Five Circle line. The junction was the site of Sorton Station. It opened as Corstofen with the line in 1842. It was renamed to Sorton in 1902 before closing in 1921. the station at South Gyle. It opened in 1985 and gets one train every two hours in both directions. We shall be calling at the station on our return journey to Edinburgh.
On the approach to Edinburgh Gateway, which is just three quarters of a mile from South Gyle, we pass beneath Glasgow Road on the A8 trunk route. The station only opened on December 11, 2016 to serve as an important interchange with the Edinburgh Tram Network and the nearby International Airport of Edinburgh. It is served by three trains an hour, all managed by Abellio Scott Rail. Two trains for the Fife Circle via Kirkcaldy or Dunfermline and the one train for Perth, Dundee or Inverness. We now pass Edinburgh Airport to our left. The site was originally used during the First and Second World Wars until it was opened for commercial use in 1947. Today the airport operates flights to various destinations in the UK and Europe as well as international flights across the Atlantic. It is also the terminus of the Edinburgh Tram Network along with local and shuttle bus services as well as vast parking facilities. There was also a station called Turnhouse, which was located just before the road bridge that crosses the line. It opened with the line in 1897 and closed in 1930. On the horizon is the fourth road bridge, which opened in 1964 and carries the A900 dual carriageway route between both settlements of South and North Queens Ferry. Behind the fourth road bridge is the Queens Ferry Crossing Road Bridge, which opened in 2017 and carries the M90 motorway, the most northerly motorway in the United Kingdom. The 
line from Glasgow via Falkirk High converges from the left as we approach Dalmeny and the fourth bridge. The original station was opened in 1866 by the Edinburgh and Glasgow Railway and lasted 33 years until being replaced by the current station in 1890 when the fourth bridge was opened. The station today gets four trains an hour in both directions, operated by Abellio Scott Rail. We now cross the southern viaduct of the fourth bridge itself. Considered the symbol of Scotland, the fourth bridge is a worldwide icon and was voted as being Scotland's greatest man-made wonder. The bridge itself is now a World Heritage Site protected by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation. It carries the Edinburgh to Aberdeen line across the Firth of Forth estuary. Construction took eight years to complete. It began in 1882 and opened on the 4th of March 1890 by the Duke of Rossi. Its engineers were Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker. Its length is 2,467 metres. Its pier width is 37 metres, with its centre width being at 9.8 metres. Its height above water is 110 metres, with the maximum head clearance for shipping being at 46 metres. At the time of opening, the fourth bridge had the world's longest single cantilever bridge span at 521 metres, until 1917, when the Quebec Bridge in Quebec, Canada was completed and still holds the record at 549 metres. At the Northern Viaduct, on the approach to the station at North Queens Ferry, was where the station's signal box was located, along with a diamond crossover, as we start to descend towards Inverkeithing at 1 in 70. Opening in 1890, it replaced the station at North Queensferry Pier, which opened in 1874.
Today's station has been unstaffed since 1990 and shares the same service timetable with Dalmeny, four trains an hour in both directions. Leaving the station, we entered the tunnel of North Queens Ferry. The tunnel is 460 yards long and was originally a cutting when the line was opened. It was given a tunnel roof in the 1980s due to opposition from the local landowner at the time. The 40 miles per hour speed restriction is in place for the tight curve as well as Jamestown Viaduct, which is 244 yards long. The two road bridges can be seen in the background, the fourth road bridge on the left and the Queens Ferry crossing on the right. We enter Inverkeithing Tunnel, which is 418 yards long. As we approach the station, we pass Inverkeithing South Junction for freight services to the dockyard at Rosith. Opened in 1877 by the Dunfermline and Queens Ferry Railway, in the 1880s it was taken over by the North British Railway. The station and the line was reopened in 1890, when the fourth bridge was completed. Today, Inverkeithing gets served mostly by Abellio Scott Rail, as well as the Caledonian Sleeper, Cross Country and LNER. We now enter Inverkeithing's Central Junction, services to Kirkcaldy, Perth, Dundee, Aberdeen and Inverness turn to the east, whilst we turn west towards Rosyth.
The freight yard on our left is used for coal loading, and to our right is Inverkeithings North Junction, with the connecting branch from Inverkeithings East Junction. We pass beneath the M90 motorway. It runs between the M9 junction 1A all the way to Perth. Here the line begins to climb all the way to Calden Beath, with only a handful of sections where the line is level. The steepest part of the climb is between Dunfermline Queen Margaret and Calden Beath itself. The station was opened in 1917 as Roseth Holt to serve the nearby naval dockyard. In 2013, the station was upgraded to accommodate new and more efficient disabled access points for both platforms. Today the station gets two trains an hour in both directions, and an hourly service on Sundays. All services are operated by Abellio Scott Rail. The wheel slip protection system comes into force. Here the line begins to steepen, averaging at 1 in 90 before rising to 1 in 80.
We are now approaching the first of two stations at Dunfermline, as well as Charlestown Branch Junction. The branch sees little use nowadays after a long history of decline. Passenger services along with the station ceased in the 1930s and freight traffic operations are rare after the closure of King Cardin and Long Gannett Power Stations in 2016. We crossed the viaduct over the Bothwell Gardens roundabout and into the station of Dunfermline Town. The station opened as Dunfermline Conley Park in 1877 and was rebuilt in 1890 with the extension of the down platform and with the addition of the up platform. It was also renamed to Dunfermline Lower Station with the upper station being on the former Stirling and Dunfermline Railway. After the line's closure in 1968 between Dunfermline and King Cuddin Junction, the lower title was dropped until 2000 when it was renamed to Dunfermline Town. Like with Rosyth, the station sees two trains an hour in both directions, operated by Abelia Scott Rail. We leave the station at the starting gradient of 1 in 80 as we climb to the second station of Dunfermline at Dunfermline Queen Margaret. We are now approaching the once triangular junction of Town Hill. This was where Town Hill South Junction was located. Trains to the former upper station and to Stirling diverged here. Part of the line was reopened in 2008 between Stirling and Aloha.
the station was only opened back in 2000 and has the longest railway name in Scotland. Its name comes from the nearby hospital. It shares the same timetable with Dunfermline Town Station, two trains an hour in both directions. Leaving the station at 1 in 75 proved to be quite a challenge to overcome whilst filming this driver's eye view video. The same can be said for the stations of Dunfermline Town and Rosith. Here is where the former Town Hill East Junction converged. There was also a branch line that diverged to the left, which connected with the West of Fife line. Before passing the level crossing at Kingseat Road was the site of Holbeath Station. It opened in 1851 and closed in 1930. We pass beneath the M90 motorway once more. Just beyond we reached the steepest part of the line with the gradient being 1 in 72. Our train, the Class 158 Express Sprinters, were built by British Rail Engineering between 1989 and 1992 at the Derby Lithchurch Lane Works. A total of 182 units were built, with 152 being classed as 158s. Most units are formed of two carriages, with only eight having their own centre carriages. They have a top speed of 90 miles per hour, with each carriage being powered by either a 350 or 400 horsepower Cummins engine or a 350 horsepower Perkins engine, giving a total power output between 700 and 1200 horsepower per train. They were mostly designed to replace the diesel locomotive hold services on secondary mainline workings, but at the same time maintained their level of luxury for passengers. They also replaced workings by first generation diesel multiple units. Besides Abellio Scott Rail, the 158s are also managed by East Midlands Railway, Great Western Railway, Northern Trains, South Western Railway and Transport for Wales.
pass a three-car Class 170 Turbostar on a service to Edinburgh from Calden Beath. After being on a continuous climb for eight and a half miles, we reached the summit at Cowdenbeath Station. The first station at Cowdenbeath was opened to the south of the town by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway in 1848. The current station, however, was opened in 1890 by the North British Railway and by 1919 all passenger services were rerouted to this station, allowing the former station and its line to be worked by freight only until 1966. The line was still open to a nearby colliery until 1978. Today the station gets two trains an hour, with one train terminating here which returns to Edinburgh, the other train continues on to Glenrose for Thornton. Beyond Cowdenbeath, the line begins to fall all the way to the station of Glenrose and Thordson. We get the advanced warning of a 30 miles per hour speed restriction for the second tight curve that lies ahead. The advanced warning we received before arriving into Cowdenbeath is for the 20 miles per hour speed limit for the first tight curve. The line starts to descend at 1 and 91, which will eventually steepen to 1 and 68 as we approach the 20 miles per hour zone. It was the site of a junction that branched off to the left to connect with the now closed Glenfarg Railway. We approach the 30 miles per hour speed zone and once again the line is on a falling gradient, this time at 1 in 97.
this was once an important junction. The former Edinburgh and Northern Railway line from Cowden Beath would join from the right. At the same time, we passed the south end of the triangular junction with the Kinross Shire Railway. This was the site of the northern part of the triangular junction. The station opened in 1851, and like Cowden Beath, had its own freight network to the now closed iron works and colliery. Today's station, along with Cardedon and Glenrose at Thornton, sees one train every hour in both directions. This was the junction for freight services that diverged onto the former freight only line to the colliery and ironworks at Loch Gelly. The line closed in 1966 along with the junction signal box. This was where another junction was situated, this time used as a freight only line to the former colliery at Cardedon.
The station was opened in 1848 and was the terminus for passenger services from 1969 to 1989. In 2013, the station, along with all of the other stations on the Five Circle Line, besides Edinburgh Gateway, received upgrades to improve disability access. Across the 48 yard long Cardedon Viaduct, which opened with the line. As far as Glen Roseford Thornton Station, the line now runs alongside the River Orr. We now pass the Thornton Marshalling Yard and Rove's Pit, but today it sees little action. It was also a junction with the Thornton to Cross Hill Line, which connected the North British Railway with the Kinross Shire Railway.
As we arrive into the station at Glenrose Thornton, our train to Edinburgh arrives into Platform 1, which consists of a Class 170 Turbostar. The original station of Thornton Junction was located on the northern part of the junction of the same name. It was opened in 1848 by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway. Due to subsidence, the station was rebuilt several times and was ultimately closed in 1969 along with Thornton West Junction during the reshaping of British Railways. In 1989, the West Junction was reopened, once again making the Five Circle whole. The current station dates from 1992, and is the terminus for both services using the Five Circle line via Kirkcaldy, or from Dunfermline. As our Class 158 duo departs for Edinburgh via Dunfermline, we will travel back to Edinburgh via Kirkcaldy in Part 2.